Hi everyone. So real quick, I'm going to give you a, a brief introduction of the uh, pterodactyl board here. Uh, I took off a lot of the uh, breakout boards and whatnot to kind of show you what this thing looks like without them. It's a little easier to demonstrate some of these things um, right off the bat uh, doing that. I did leave on the microcontroller here. It's pretty hard to get off. Oftentimes I just use like the handle of, uh, of a pair of pliers to pull it off. So I just decided not to do that here. There are a couple uh, 10 kilo ohm resistors under here. Those are used for your uh, thermistor sensors. Um, but yeah, it's not real important that you, you see that in the video here. Um, so getting started, what you're kind of what you're seeing here, you're seeing a lot of female header pins. So that's actually where you're gonna be plugging in a lot of these external sensors. Um, yeah, in addition, we have quite a few terminal blocks. A lot of them are just used for uh, external sensors and whatnot. Um, so you can plug them in, twist, uh, twist the top of these with a, a small terminal block screwdriver uh, and mount them into place, but we won't be doing that in this case. Um, what we do have here, uh, so this, I'm just using a shorting wire right now because I'm lazy, but normally this would actually be a toggle switch. Um, and that's just so you can short these two terminals to actually power the board. Um, and you could, you can do that from outside of the, outside of your payload box when you have that toggle switch. Um, but in this case, if I plug this battery in right here, things would power up because they're already shorted. Um, what else? We got a couple strips of mail headers over here. Uh, this longer strip is actually meant to set your payload ID. So what you do is just use one of these uh, shorting pins right here and set a payload ID. You can set one through four um, and then no shorting pin is ID zero. So um, you have quite a few options there and you'll probably be assigned one for this class. Um, so it's important to have that in place upon boot up. Um, right next to the ID shorting pins, you have a pull before flight pin. So the idea there is you, you plug this in, um, you turn everything on, make sure all the sensors init initialize properly. Um, and then you wait until, you know, you're about to, about to release the balloon and you pull that out. So you have a more accurate flight timer than, um, the microcontroller, which will just start counting up as soon as you turn this thing on. Um, so that's kind of useful. Um, what else? We got a nine volt regulator here or a five volt regulator, excuse me. Um, so that's just to, uh, drop down this this nine volts from your battery to five volts so it can uh, properly power the microcontroller if you plug nine volts right into the microcontroller it'll fry it so um, it's important to have that in there but that's just soldered right on the board um, here are two barrel inputs for the battery we have two because um, in some instances if you're using like a more powerful more powerful radio um, in like a comms unit or some external sensors that require a lot of power you'll probably need more than a nine volt but with everything that's just mounted right on the board um, you can power this thing long enough for a full flight easily a full three hour flight so um, it really doesn't matter which one you choose for uh, using one nine volt um, let's see we have some leds mounted here so they're labeled with different things uh, they'll indicate like when you're XB radio is transmitting when your SD card is logging um, and a few different different things. We have some slide and momentary switches over here. Um, so the slide switches you can turn on and off to you know, make your board uh, run some different code and do some different things. Uh, in the case of just using it as like a data logger and, and transmitting via XB, um, all the switches should just be in the off position and you won't even have to worry about um, messing with the momentary switches um, and then there are a couple servo inputs here so that's actually or uh, servo outputs I should say so that those are actually for uh, one of our um, kind of what we use this thing for um, on ballooning team which is releasing um, CubeSats through a peapod system um, so you won't have to worry about that but um, that option is available for us.
Um, yeah, so let's start throwing some things on this. I uh, guess I'll start off with the uh, MS5611 altimeter. So this is both a pressure sensor and a temperature sensor. Um, plug that in right here. So that's the only pressure sensor we have on board. Uh, next we'll do the U-Block GPS. So the board on the bottom here, I don't know if you can see that too well. So there's a thin board below, but then you have your um, antenna that's just taped to the top here. Um, that just plugs in right here. In the sense of all these, um, all these external boards, it's pretty clear the orientation uh, and where these things plug in. Every every uh, footprint is labeled with uh, a name, so so you can know where to plug in things. Um, and orientation is just very straightforward. It'll pretty much only go in one way. Uh, so next we have our OLED screen. This is particularly useful in boot up um, and making sure that um, the data looks good before you let this thing go. So um, we'll talk more about this uh, when we turn this thing on. Next we got our XB radio. Um, this is just a short range radio so uh, it's good for communicating to a comms unit if you have one. Uh, the comms unit transmits to the ground um, so in any case you only, you'd only have one comms unit and that would take in all the XB data on a particular stack and it would transmit that to the ground through a, um, a longer range radio. Um, and then we have a 9 degree freedom IMU so that has 3 axis accelerometer, 3 axis gyroscope and a 3 axis magnetometer. Um, and that goes right here. Yeah. Um, then we actually have a micro SD card. So that uh, plugs right into your uh, Teensy microcontroller. So that'll log all your flight data. The, the uh, logging rate is, is once per second. And I'll try to throw something up on the screen here that shows um, our pretty standard logging uh, data string. Um, yeah. And then, so of course your 9 volt battery with the barrel input. Um, and I'll just show you what, what things kind of look like when you power this thing up. So you'll see a lot of lights. Um, pretty much each breakout board has a, uh, an LED on board. Um, and then, so you can't really probably see here, but it runs through uh, initialization on the OLED screen. Oh, that's really bright. Um, in this case, I actually have a remove before flight pin on. So basically these LEDs just indicate that you have to pull this before uh, starting your flight timer and logging data. So I would pull this from outside the payload to start the timer. Um, and then you'll actually be able to see, again, I don't know if you'll be able to see for sure on camera, but uh, it'll actually list out a lot of the data that's being seen from your different components. So in this case, I have latitude, longitude, uh, altitude, all from the GPS, uh, and then two temperature values. One is the internal, and then the other one will be external. I don't actually have an external sensor plugged in right now. But um, the idea is this would be a thermistor on some longer wires so it could protrude outside the box so you could kind of compare uh, internal and external temperatures. Um, yeah, you'll see a few LEDs over here. Uh, one of those LEDs just indicates, oh, my bad, I unplugged it here. Uh, one of them indicates um, the SD logging is occurring. So again, that's once per second. Um, and then the transmissions through the XB radio to the comms unit, um, they, those occur once every 10 seconds. So, and I'll throw up the, the transmission string um, for, for this device as well. Basically the only difference between the logging string and the uh, transmitting string or the transmission is uh, we leave out the IMU data just because uh, transmitting IMU data at, at once every 10 seconds is not very useful in determining the attitude of the balloon.
or the attitude of the payload. Yeah.